Type 2 diabetes is a disease characterized by high blood sugar levels and an inability to regulate those sugar levels. For this reason, many people say that eating sugar is the cause of type 2 diabetes. Is that the case though? Let's have a look. So a large number of studies have found that people who regularly drink sugar sweetened beverages, so drinks with high amounts of sugar added to them, uh, have a 25% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. In fact, drinking just one sugar sweetened beverage per day increases your risk by 13% independent of any weight gain it may cause. Now, this review and analysis concluded that of 20.9 million events of type 2 diabetes predicted to occur over 10 years in the USA, 1.8 million would be attributable to consumption of sugar sweetened beverages. And of 2.6 million events in the UK, 79,000 would be attributable to consumption of sugar sweetened beverages. Additionally, countries where sugar consumption is highest also have the highest rates of type 2 diabetes, while those with the lowest consumption have the lowest rates. Now, while these studies do not prove that sugar causes diabetes, uh, the association is strong, we can't deny that. So what's going on then? Well, many researchers believe that sugar increases type 2 diabetes risk both directly and indirectly. It may directly increase risk because of the impact fructose has on your liver, including promoting fatty liver, inflammation, and localized insulin resistance. Eating large amounts of sugar can also indirectly raise diabetes risk by contributing to weight gain and increased body fat, which are separate risk factors for developing diabetes or type 2 diabetes, but they're also very strong risk factors. So the effects of sugar are twofold. There's the potential effects that it has on your liver. And then there's also the fact that sugar is coming as additional calories typically. So those extra calories lead to weight gain and that weight gain, especially if it's around the abdominal area, can lead to insulin resistance. And this can then of course lead to type two diabetes. Natural sugars don't have the same effect. Now, before you get carried away and throw everything with sugar out the kitchen window, know that natural sugars don't appear to be a problem. And basically, natural sugars are sugars that are found in fruits and vegetables. They aren't added in the manufacturing process. Since these types of sugar exist in a matrix of fiber, water, antioxidants, and other nutrients, they're digested and absorbed more slowly and are less likely to cause blood sugar spikes. Fruits and vegetables also tend to contain far less sugar by weight than many processed foods, so it's easier to keep your consumption in check. For example, a peach is about 8% sugar by weight, while a Snickers bar or a Mars bar is 50% sugar by weight. And while research is a bit mixed, some studies have found that eating at least one serving of fruit per day reduces diabetes risk by 7 to 13% compared to eating no fruit. Now this makes sense when you also consider that those who eat more fruit are likely to be making more health conscious food choices overall. Okay, so what about fruit juice? Several studies have found a link between drinking fruit juice and developing diabetes, perhaps due to juices high sugar and low fiber contents. However, not all studies have replicated these results, so more research is needed. I think if you consider that it is extra calories that you drink, just like soda, and it's highly likely those calories are additional calories that are putting you into a caloric surplus where you might actually gain weight. And if you do gain weight, then it increases your risk of type two diabetes. So in that regard, I would say that yes, juice does contribute. Now, as for natural sweeteners like honey, maple syrup, and agave, even though they are made from natural plant sources, they're still highly refined, much like sucrose or table sugar. Basically, they're still sources of added sugar, just like table sugar, you should be having you know, small amounts. Don't start eating them from the jar. Other risk factors for diabetes. Sugar intake is just one piece of the puzzle. These are also big factors in type two diabetes risk. First is body weight. Now, as I've been talking about it before, but research shows obesity is one of the main risk factors for type two diabetes. Uh, losing just five to 10% of your body weight can reduce that risk. Exercise is really important as well. People who live sedentary lifestyles have nearly twice the risk of developing type two diabetes compared to those who are active. So just 150 minutes per week of moderate activity can reduce uh, that risk. Smoking 20 or more cigarettes per day more than doubles your risk of diabetes. Fortunately, quitting brings that risk nearly back to normal. Sleep apnea is a condition uh, in which breathing is obstructed during the night. And this is a unique risk factor for diabetes, but it makes me think uh, it, poor sleep, poor sleep from, you know, caused by other reasons is also a factor as well. Uh, I think so. And lastly, of course, genetics, the risk of developing type two diabetes, it's 40% if one of your parents has it and nearly 70% if both parents have it. So that suggests uh, a strong genetic component as well. Okay, so let's recap. 
So a high sugar intake is strongly associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. This is likely due to the negative effects that it has on the liver, but more importantly, it's because it increases your risk of weight gain and obesity. The more fat you have here around your organs, especially as you grow older, the more likely you are to develop metabolic issues. Interestingly, natural sugars found in whole fruits and vegetables are not linked to an increased diabetes risk. So actually the problem is sugar in concentrated forms that we manufacture, like soft drinks, fruit juice, cakes, cookies, lollies, etc. And in the context of an excessive calorie intake. So basically, if you eat real whole foods and not very much junk foods, then you should be good. And if reducing your added sugar intake seems overwhelming at first, you can just start by cutting out sugar-sweetened beverages like soft drinks and fruit juices. These are the primary sources of added sugars in the Western diet, and this one small change can make a big impact. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. And don't forget to subscribe to Healthline's Authority Nutrition YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button below this video.